Hello and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I want to go over that how you can perform UI testing for your Swift UI applications. You can see that right now we have a default content view. On the right side, you can see that there's nothing there. It's just a hello world application. What we want to build is a very basic kind of the to-do list application, which means that we will eventually have some sort of a text box over here. Maybe we'll have a button over here. Whenever we put something in the text box and we press a button, that item will be added to a list control right here, and then second item, and then so on. So that's the whole story. That's what we want to do. Um, we're going to do this in a TDD way. So I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new project, which will be a UI testing. So let me go select your current project, which is a to-do app. And if you go to editor, you can say add target. And you can see that you have different templates available. If you just search for UI, you can see that you have a UI testing bundle. So that's the one that we need. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Whatever the name is, that's perfectly fine. And we can get started. Okay. So if we are doing the TDD approach, let me actually go ahead and remove all of that stuff, all the default code. Then we have to make sure that what kind of a story that we are working with, and obviously we're going to be write our test first, and then we will implement our code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to provide some sort of a context over here. So when the user types some things, types or yeah, types task name, task name and press add button. You can see it's very descriptive. And then should add task to the list. You can see it's very descriptive and this is more of a behavior driven development approach. I mean, this is not the, all of the behavior driven development, but the naming of the function and being a very descriptive name is one of the features of behavior driven development. And we are actually testing a behavior. So when the user types in the task name and press the add button, uh, the task uh, should add the task to the list. That's the perfect uh, name of the test and the context that we are working with. Now, since this is a UI test, I do need to go ahead and create the app variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and create a private var app, which will be XC UI application. So this application or this particular class is going to allow us to refer to different kind of elements in our app right now, all right? And I do want to fire this again and again, so maybe it's a good idea to create a setup function called super.setup which is going to call the base class setup. So in super in this case is XC test case, but it can be any other base class also. So that's why I always remember to call super. And then I can go ahead and initialize the UI application. I also need to go ahead that I launch the application using the launch function, or if I don't call the launch function, the test will never really launch the application. Okay, so now I can go back to my test and I'm going to start assuming things now. Basically, I'm assuming that I have a text field, which is called the task name text field. And I'm going to try to get that from the app instance, app.textfields, and I can provide the identifier. This is the accessibility identifier that I need to pass in, and I need to set that accessibility identifier eventually in my Swift UI application. So whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to call it the task name text field. Okay, so once we get the access to the text field, what do I want to do? Well, I want to actually tap on the text field so it is activated. And then I want to write something in the text field. If I'm writing a task, I can go ahead and type the test text. I can say wash the car. And we're going to go ahead and press slash N also over here, which means that after writing wash the car, it will press the return key in the keyboard so that the keyboard can go away, okay? Next up, we're gonna go ahead and get the add task button. There will be a button 
that you can press to add a task to the list. self.app.buttons and add task button. Once we have the button, we only have to go ahead and tap the button, which means clicking the button. And what should happen at that point? So at that point, all of our tasks, or the one task that we actually entered in this case, which is typing the wash the car, that should be added to a list. So I can go ahead and what I will do over here is I will go ahead and get the number of children of the list. So we're going to go ahead and say task count self dot. Now there is something called tables over here also, app dot tables. And if you do provide the ID over here, unfortunately it doesn't really work as expected. So I do have to say something like this. So tables dot, and then you have to find out that what exactly are you looking for? So you can see that I can call children and I'm looking for a cell in the tables and give me the count of those cells. For some reason, if you actually pass in the actual uh, accessibility identifier to target a particular table, it doesn't really work as expected. Maybe there's a way, but it's different. Assert equal and how many tasks do you, are you asserting? Meaning if a person types in wash the car and press the add button, how many tasks do you think should be added to the list? Most probably one task only because you just type in wash the car, right? So I'm going to ex expect that there will be only one particular cell. If, one, if there is one cell, then it means that one task has been added because that's how the list works. It is based on the number of cells. Now, if I go ahead and run this particular test right now, you're going to see that this is obviously going to fail. And the reason that this is going to fail is that we don't have any thing called task name text field. We don't have any add task button. We don't have tables. We don't have anything. This is when we have written our test first and we don't have uh, any kind of application to perform or to validate this kind of test. So what should we do at this point? So let's go ahead and run the test. You can see that it's installing the app and it's going to launch the app and it's completely going to fail because we don't have anything right now. So you can see it actually simply failed. It's saying, well, I don't know what you're talking about. There is no such thing as task name text field. So how can we fix this issue? All right. So in order to fix this issue, we have to go to our app, which is the content view. And we have to make sure that we have those controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a vStack. And inside the vStack, I'm just going to go ahead and start typing. So text field, that's what we need. And enter task. And then we have a binding. So I have to provide some sort of a binding. So I'll create a binding called task name. But the most important thing for us is the accessibility. And it's going to start appearing as soon as I accessibility identifier. So this will be the task name text field. This is the identifier that we are using to grab the text field in our test. Right now, we don't really have any task name. So I need to create that state, state private var task name, which is of type string. There we go. All right. So that hopefully should build now. Let's go ahead and refresh our view. We still don't really have any button. We still don't have any list. So let's go ahead and first of all, give a little bit of a padding to our uh, V stack. There we go. That's perfect. And now we can go ahead and add a button. But I want to add the button on the right hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to say text style and rounded button text style or text field style. All right, things like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy and paste some code because I don't want to show you how to build a UI. We are already, we, you should know all to how to build a UI in Swift UI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy the code for the user interface so we can actually test it out. All right, so this is our basic UI. You can see it's nothing really crazy going on over here. I have created a task or text field, which has a accessibility, which is task name text field. 
I have a button. It does not have any accessibility. So let's go ahead and add accessibility also. So we're going to say accessibility and we're going to pass in the identifier, which I believe is add task button. All right, make sure that this is the same identifier that you are trying to use. As you can see over here, we have the identifier, which is add task button. Great. Let's go back again. Let's go ahead and build it. The list right now doesn't really do justice because the list is simply displaying numbers from 0 to 10, which we don't really want to do. So how can we make sure that we pass the test? Well, if you go ahead and run your test right now, it may be able to detect few items like the text field and maybe even the button, but it's not going to validate that you have number of items like one item. And you can see that it's actually failing over here. And it's saying that 11 items were actually found and you are, think that it's going to be one. Why 11 items? Well, because we are displaying 11 different items from zero to 10. All right, so that's the thing that we have to fix. So if I go over here now, I need to make sure that this is not displaying zero to 10, but actual items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a state variable and I will call it private var task. And this will be nothing more than an empty array of strings for now. Now, whenever the person adds something, I can simply go ahead and say task dot append and append the self dot task name, which is the data from the text field. And now instead of using the loop on top of this range, I can simply say task and everything else should hopefully remain the same. And we can go ahead and get the name of the task and finally print the task. All right. So let's go ahead and now go ahead and run the test and see if our test or UI test passes or not. I'm going to go ahead and run the simulator again. And this time you're going to see that it's going to be making sure that we type in something and then add button is clicked. And now wash the car is added to the actual uh, list. Now, if I go ahead and press and test button two times, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the same exact wash the car will be added to the list, but in this case, two times. So our test should fail because we were expecting it only to be called one time or the count to be one. And you can actually see it in the error that what it is saying, it is saying, well, uh, you were expecting one, but we got two. All right, so let's just not click it twice. All right. Now, another thing to note over here is that the only way that the simulator or the test can actually get access to your text field and use that to typing is to make sure that when you go to the device, let's see if I can access that in the simulator. I think one of the features of the device is a keyboard. Uh, you can see that this is checked, which is connect hardware keyboard. So basically we want the feature that will make sure that the keyboard from our app is actually going to pop out. You can see if I click over here, uh, if I go and make sure that it actually pops out. So keyboard, there we go. Now, here we go. So make sure that this is actually not connected, like connect hardware keyboard. All right. So if I press the home button again and I open the app. All right. And if I click on it, well, it's already clicked, I guess. If I press the return key, if I click on this, you can see the keyboard popping up. That's what we actually want. Because if the keyboard doesn't pop up, then it will have a little bit of a weird behavior of running the uh, the actual test. And yes, it may work for the first one, but if you have multiple text fields, I have seen that if you connect your keyboard, hardware keyboard, then it will not work. All right. So hope you really like this. Uh, this is how you will perform UI testing for your Surf UI applications. If you want to learn more about programming in Surf UI, then the best course in the market right now is Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. You can see that I have more than 
3,000 students enrolled and great ratings also. This is a 15 plus hour course because I keep on adding some new stuff all the time and it will take you from the beginner level to advanced concepts. Actually, right at the end over here, we will also create some crazy applications like Near Me application for using Maps features, which you can use to find the nearest coffee shop. We're also going to replicate the Apple Stocks application. But apart from that, you also have the core data integration. You have property wrappers, forms, building UI, coffee ordering application. One of my favorites because you have to implement the whole uh, web API and I'll show you how your application SIF UI can talk to the coffee API using MVVM design pattern. So this is the complete course and if you want to get this course then the best way is to check out the link in the description and there will be other courses also. Uh, apart from that I've also created just launched my Patreon page. So if you want to support my videos, uh, there is a link of Patreon on the uh, on the Google, or not the, on the YouTube description, and uh, you can become a member. Uh, and it will really help me produce uh, these videos every single week. So thank you so much for your continued support, and I really hope that you enjoy the videos.